Yo, wow. It's been a minute, but we're back. Let's get into it. I got a lot to talk about. But before we get into the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Welcome to my channel where we create and connect in this complex culture. I've been, I've been, I've been living life. I've been chasing my dreams. Okay, first things first. I graduated from my dream school, Howard University. The kid, scholar billionaire. Those are for the day ones that have been there since day one for real. Scholar B, like we did it. It's it's a it's a dream come true. It's a real blessing. I share this on my posts, on my graduation posts, but not everybody knows. But truth is like, I didn't get into Howard. And the reason why I decided to even share that is because it's my, part of my story and it's part of my journey. And so I'm gonna tell my truth. I'm always gonna share my truth. And that was the first, like, I would say the first, time that I really hit rock bottom at a young age. When you're in school, we're put into these structures, these environments to strive to be the best, right? And as you grow up, you know, in a perfect world, you know what you want to do when you grow up. That's not everybody's situation. It really hit me hard because I worked so hard. I worked so hard middle school and high school. I was actually at the same school for seven years. Yup, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th and 12th. That's seven, let's go. <laughs> I went to a performing front arts high school and I put my blood, sweat and tears into my educational career when it came to acting, being in stage play productions, touring around California, being a part of summer programs at Princeton. Like, I just, I did a lot. I also made history at my high school for being elected into four leadership positions consecutively for four years. So, secretary, treasurer, vice president, and then president. I don't know why I'm like this. And I'm also a legacy, so my parents, godparents, and my aunt went to Howard. So people that know me knows that. So when I was able to do what I was able to do with the favor of God, I knew that I wasn't going to play around with my time. Like I knew when I got to Howard, I was going to do everything that was that I was set to do. Honestly, class of 2024 have been through a lot. Have been through a lot. And it feels like we're guinea pigs. I mean, when you talk about freshman year, when it was virtual, and we'll get into that, but we had a virtual freshman year. Now, I already set my mind that I already prepared myself mentally that we wouldn't be on campus because just the way things were looking it just wasn't looking good. The spikes were high with COVID cases, and honestly, I'm, I'm from California, so my parents weren't gonna let me just fly out to DC just to be in DC. Like, <laughs> we needed to make sure that everything was set in stone, so unfortunately, like, I wasn't able to just go to DC for the link-ups and all of that because I'm 3,000 miles away. It just didn't work out, so we've been through a lot. From that to the Blackburn protests to we never even got a white party, bro. Literally two days, two days of our freshman freshman week were cool. Literally two days of our freshman week were cool. And then it was canceled because we had fun outside. Like, so listen, 2024, I'm so, 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 so proud of us because we did it like we are the class of the, what do they call us? Um, Five hours later. Dang. 
what what was our class name? What did they call us? The class of two hours later. But we are the class of the dauntless. Nothing can can stop us. There's nothing we cannot handle. And I don't even like to use the word can't, but I just mean like we can overcome anything because we've been through the unprecedented. We've been through so many hurdles together and we did it regardless. So I'm just really happy to be here. I'm happy that from the jump, I made this happen with the support of my family, of course. But yeah, we also are the largest graduating class in the institution's history. There were about 2,508 degrees, approximately 439 graduates for first generation and 2,000 bachelor degrees. So, hey, we showed up and showed out. I'm excited for this next chapter of my life. And that's why I am going to be very intentional about the content that I make moving forward. I think it's important to document my journey. I always thought that was important. I always done it. So basically the purpose of this video is the first episode of my post-grad diaries series. And um, yeah, really I just wanna freestyle it, just get some things off my mind, just be, authentic with my answers. I think this will be really helpful for anybody that's interested or already going through uh, their school right now. Also, I wanna say that after graduation, I went on a graduation trip, went to Nice, France with a few of my friends. We went to Nice, France and Monaco and it was, it was a real good time. Like, I'm about to roll the tapes on on a montage. It was beautiful. The weather, the water, the food was delicious. I love truffle, so that's something I learned about myself while out there. But traveling the world is definitely necessary. I feel like everybody needs to do it for their mental health because you're put into a new space and you get to appreciate other people's culture. And mm -hmm. so we are gonna go on another trip upcoming so stay tuned for that but yeah let's roll the tapes hey please <laughs> Okay, we'll just wait. We'll just wait, bro. You about to get kidnapped or something? What's wrong with this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I don't think this is a discussion or a debate. Howard University is the one and only Mecca. It is in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, and it's produced top tier quality alumni who are doctors, filmmakers, professors, lawyers, engineers, artists. Like, the list goes on. The list goes on. We got uh, Tony, Tony Morrison, Thurgood Marshall, Felicia Rashad, Chadwick Bozeman. Like, you know, it, it, the list is real long. Besides that, oh, Taraji P. Henson. Howard has basically been part of my life because both of my parents met there and they had me visit Howard a couple of times growing up. And I remember the summer, it was my junior year of high school, I was just doing a whole DC tour, college tour during the summer. And I remember visiting campus with a tour guide and I was like, wow, like look at all these beautiful black people. And this is like 2018, so this is pre-COVID, okay? so. The, the campus, the campus was bumping. It was just, it was beautiful. And I realized that, okay, this place, this school may have something to offer me. So once I did my own research, I realized that I could get the best of both worlds. I can study the craft, what I'm passionate about, and I can also be around people that look like me which is really a once in a lifetime thing. I just knew that was gonna push me to be great. So when it comes to other HBCUs, I'm honestly not gonna diss other schools because it's all love at the end of the day. But what I will say is that Howard University is number one. Yeah, <laughs> drop the mic. <laughs> okay, at Howard University, I feel like anybody can guess this, but number one definitely is political science. Number two is business, administration, finance. And then number three is television and film. Those are like the top three popular majors at Howard University. <laughs> My favorite freshman memory, this is so rich because I didn't have a freshman year on campus. My freshman year was virtual from 2020, August 2020 to May 2021. Literally at home in Sacramento, in California. My favorite freshman memory was when I was selected as a winner for the National Black Movie Association HBCU Real Competition. I was recognized as an HBCU Filmmaker of the Year my freshman year. So honestly, that was that, that was a huge highlight. That was definitely the number one highlight of my year because like within less than six months, wrote, directed, produced my first short film, and then it got picked up and became award winning. And then I, I gotta put it out there, okay? We were we were in group chats. We were in group chats. We were Twitter heads, okay? That was a time in itself. That was its own era. I'm going to describe each year, my four years at Howard with one word, and then we gonna roll the tapes. We gonna roll the tapes. All right, freshman year, advocacy. Sophomore year, social light. Junior year, wholesome. Senior year, victory lap. 
Let's go. Let's go. Roll the tapes. Roll the tapes. because it was 2020 and it was an uproar of riots and protest because of the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and there was just so much happening when it came to COVID and racism. It's just plain like that. And with my class in particular, a lot of people were, were participating, were being activists, um, organizing their own protests in their hometown so it was it was something to remember and me personally i i wrote my own poem and i spoke in front of like 10,000 people in my hometown for the march and it was just a time to really use our voice like as the youth to use our voice and speak out on what matters and what was important to us so that's why I say advocacy. That was also the word that Howard used for our, <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a word that Howard used for our virtual homecoming. So I thought that that would resonate. Socialite sophomore year, AKA freshman year. Amen, amen. I ain't really gonna speak on it, but that year we was outside. We was outside. I was having a good time and honestly, I was getting to know a lot of people like in person for the first time because all we knew were these online personas like who 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 are you really look don't 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 believe everything online honestly social media is fake <laughs> so it was it was really interesting and I'm, I'm gonna keep it real i feel like with our class in particular we definitely were at a disadvantage when it comes to the social circles and just social life in general because we didn't have a chance to get to know everybody for face value like when we got to campus it was like everybody already had their circles and you know there's very few of those circles that are still together to this day but i just feel like it did us a disservice when it comes to like really socializing and coming together bonding as a class because everybody felt like they found their people but 
it is what it is um so yeah and then junior year wholesome is the word because that year i was booed up there's parts of myself that i didn't even know were, that i had that were in me and i just feel like i was in a I just feel like I was in a space that really pushed me to see myself for, for who I am and just see different parts of me. I had someone else in my life that I cared for and that I thought about and all the other things. Senior year, victory lap with a huge B. <laughs> victory lap. Facts, facts. I was traveling a lot, you know, and I was networking, doing the thing, man, doing my thing. So yeah, it was a good run for sure. I feel like when I got to Howard, everybody that gets to Howard are the number one, they're the, like most people that get to Howard are already top of the class, right? Cream of the crop. But once you get to Howard, it's different because now you're around people who are black, part of the African diaspora, and everybody is on top. But you got a clean slate and you got to start from the beginning. You got to start from the bottom and build your way back up. You got to create your own brand. You got to make sure that you create a name for yourself. If that's what you care about, if, if you you know, have certain goals or whatnot. I just feel like Howard University molded me into the woman that I always knew I would be, that I always knew I would become. I just feel like it really pushed me to levels that I needed to be pushed in order to get to where I am. I was pushed to levels mentally, physically, emotionally, financially I was really tested as a leader because one of the lessons that I learned which I'm gonna get to later in the video when I got to campus like first of all my particular school was moved out of its original building into a high school and everything was just dry it was dry okay it was dry we, we went into the building we left that's it when I officially decided that I was gonna run for president of my school, I knew that whatever my platform was gonna be, I had to make a change. I had to make an impact. And I had to make an impact with energy, with, with passion, and with purpose. With God on my side, and with my passion, I was able to cultivate a new culture at my school where people were really inspired and really driven to want to work on a council that requires work voluntary work but people wanted to be a part of what i was creating people wanted to be a part of my platform shine which stands for striving to hone influential narratives of excellence People wanted to be a part of it. They, they saw it as a movement, as something that connected to them as a person, something that they could live by. And, you know, I just really feel that with, with that whole experience, you know, it was something beautiful to see. Cause it, the impact that was made is intangible. But it's also tangible because people were motivated to go out of these walls and to create a name for themselves, to seek opportunity so that they can be competitive in their career field and their majors. I feel like Howard really put me into challenges, into spaces that I would have not gotten anywhere else. So my, my journey at Howard has really shaped me into the person that I need to be in order to do the things that God has planned for me in this life. So 
that's really the simplest way I can put it because I can go on and on about how Howard has shaped my identity, but I feel like Howard was also a safe space for me to just be who I am as a person, be my authentic self, be able to express my identity, you know, and just the things that are real to me, that are true to me. And I was able to do that in a safe space with just support and love and attention. <laughs> I did serve two terms as president of my school back to back from 2022 to 2024 on the platform of Shine and then Shine Brighter. That in itself it tells a story. And we also put on 100 events while at Howard University. And yeah, man, it's, it's a blessing. Like, I'm gonna write a book one day. I'm gonna write a book. One of my craziest HE moments, oh, there's so many, but the one that I can like legit say on camera, <laughs> I went to a party. I went to a party with, with two friends. <laughs> And we had a time, we, it was fun. Uh, and then on our way back to Towers, it's like midnight or past midnight. I kid you not, bro. And they know who they are. One of them was so like, they were lit and they dropped their phone. Me and my friend, we were walking in front of them. We hear a loud thump. It went, not like that, but like, you know when you hear something drop. So we're like, what was that? Shorty dropped her phone with a cracked screen. She ended up breaking her phone. I kid you not. <laughs> the phone drops and she fell as well. Like she fell with the phone. Then a whole bunch of rats come out of nowhere from under the car, just scattering around. And I'm, bro, we're like, where did these where did they come from? I don't like, I don't like rats, bro. That's all a different story. But they're literally running around, around our friend. And it is hilarious because there is so much going on. Of course, there's students, there's people all over the streets, like being loud, cars honking at each other. So there's just enough going on around us. So to see that all happen simultaneously, That's not only like a crazy moment, but also like one of the funniest Howard moments. All right, what's the party culture like at Howard? You know, like I said, I'm an introvert if I had to choose. So I wasn't like outside, outside every single party. I, I was still outside, don't get me wrong. I Trust me, I was at the Banneker parties, okay? I can only speak for my class. I feel like our parties were decent. Like freshman year or freshmore year, we had a lot of house parties. And I definitely went to the best house party. I'm not gonna say which one, cause if you know, you know. You know, party culture at Howard is real. I'm not like a party animal. You know, I know how to have a good time. I know how to be the life of the party, but I'm not a party animal, so. I just say that definitely be prepared to dress up, go out and have fun because it's part of the culture. You know, it's wild because honestly, <laughs> everything that I was doing, just being involved on campus, I feel like I really did my big one. I did my big one and I cherish my time and I cherish my time with others. As I mentioned before, I learned things that I didn't even know I had in myself. And I learned how to love. I learned that you can know somebody for a certain amount of time, but you don't really know them. That's real. And honestly, I'm not gonna get really deep into it because I feel like, you know, that's something I can discuss in a book <laughs> and something I can discuss in like future interviews. So yeah, I just don't want this particular answer to take away from like my video. But what I will say that overall, 
I learned that I'm a lover girl, honestly. Moving forward, I'm intentionally gonna make sure that I put in love into every aspect of my life. Not just romantic relationships, but with my friends, with my family, with my passion, my career, with travel. It's never okay to put down my boundaries or diminish or like belittle who I am for someone else's comfort. I can only be me and can't dim my shine. Like that's just part of me. It's important to make compromise. It's important to dis it's important to communicate. <laughs> communication is everything. That's the key to any and everything. So clear communication is like literally number one when it comes to relationships. I learned about my love languages. Actually, I took a test recently and it makes a lot of sense. Just moving forward, just being more cautious. Communication, compromise, and be cautious, tight. I'm beyond where I thought I would be four years ago. I actually created a, a Howard plan <laughs> for each like year. And then I also wrote like a little, I wrote my goals. It's, it's really only up from here. But you know, I also wanna make sure that I always remember where I come from, always remember those grounded lessons, those, those moments that really molded me, really humbled me, but also built me up. If you watched the video, you made it this far, I really appreciate you. And I got top 10 lessons to share with you that I acquired during my time at Howard University. Let's get into it. Number one, never take no for an answer. Number two, grow with God. Number three, be present and enjoy the moment. Number four, stay exclusive. I like that one. But basically, your small habits, how you spend your mornings, the people in your circle who has access to you, that really matters. And it will change your life. Four, leadership. You make an impact when you inspire others to do more, to dream more, to learn more, to be more. And with leadership comes a strong mind, a service heart, and a strong core. All right, number six, pay yourself first. Number seven, people can tell you anything, but that vibe gonna tell you everything. Also, AKA, actions speak louder than words. All right, number eight, don't sacrifice who you are. Your light and truth, don't do it. Number nine, impact over influence. Number 10, everything happens in God's time. You know, God, he really does work in mysterious ways. So yeah. And then the bonus lesson, everybody is going through something in life and maybe be really busy. They may be really busy. So sometimes you really gotta extend some grace. Be patient with people. Thank you again if you made it this far in the video. Be safe, stay blessed, and I'm gonna catch y'all in the next episode. It's only up, it's only up, it's only up from here.